today's tutorial, we're going to go over how to create a deal creation workflow in HubSpot. So essentially what happens is we set up a regular workflow, which is usually is used for some sort of nurturing or internal uh, automation to help segment contacts. But in this case, we're going to basically grab a list of contacts and then create deals and place them in specific pipelines at specific deal stages automatically without us having to touch any of it. So to go to, in order to create this deal creation workflow, we want to go to automation, workflows. We're gonna create a regular workflow like we've done before. So in the top right, create a workflow. We're actually gonna use a contact-based workflow. I'm gonna, I always like to start from scratch. I'm gonna name this my deal creation workflow, create workflow. So a common way to create a deal creation workflow is to use a property called HubSpot score as the enrollment criteria. And the HubSpot score is actually a really cool tool within HubSpot that essentially is some sort of internal score that is incremented or decremented based on what that contact is doing, whether that be a CTA click, an email opened, you know, a number of forms submitted. So example, if someone submits one form, you know, they get 10 points. If someone submits five forms, that's an additional 50 points. So, you know, at that point they'll have 60 points, right? And so maybe at that 60 point mark, you know, we, they have, we now qualify them as someone that we should reach out to maybe as a marketing qualified lead or even a sales qualified lead. And so that's when we want to enable our sales team to really, you know, get notified that, hey, there's someone who is ready to be talked to, who's ready to be sold on whatever we're doing. So in this case, let's, you know, continue using that example, you know, because HubSpot score is a contact property. So I'm going to search for score, use HubSpot score. And I'm going to say is, you know, greater than or equal to you know, 60, right? So I want people who, you know, have reached 60, but maybe at some point, you know, there's additional criteria where it's, you know, they got 40 points for, you know, opening 10 emails, right? And then they got an additional 30 points for submitting, you know, three forms. So that puts them at 70 points. So I still want to capture those people, even though they're above 60. Um, and I'm going to save that. And then I'm going to add this action. And then that action is going to be a create deal action. And so I'm going to assign it to the existing owner, wherever that contact owner is. Um, and I'm going to put it in one of the pipelines that I've already created. So whenever you're setting up your sales pipelines, right, you're going to have all of these pipelines available to you to use. So, you know, if you're using it for a specific, um, you know, large push for you know this long-term campaign or it's for a specific academic year um, or it's for some sort of just general donation you know uh, process um, you're going to want to use that specific pipeline and depending on what their score is or however or however you're qualifying these uh, contacts you can place them in a specific stage usually it's going to be something near the beginning um, because usually you want to send those initial qualified leads into the pipeline um, so that your sales team can further uh, bring them down you know, the funnel and, and, it, and in the end really close the deal. So I'm going to put place them in the discovery stage. A pretty common best practice that we use is to use the contact's first name and last name as the deal name. Uh, and you can use this through contact tokens. So for example, I'm going to do first name, and then space last where is it last name and then maybe something like deal or you know you could do something like uh donor you know you get the idea it's just a way to better categorize all of these deal cards that appear in that specific deal pipeline um you can set a close date, so it's like, you know, after 90 days, you know, the, the deal will automatically close and it'll be some sort of, you know, loss deal. You can add the amount, so let's say, you know, if you're a school, right, your tuition is going to be something like, you know, 35, you know, thousand dollars, or, you know, maybe it's going to be more like ten thousand dollars. So that is the amount of the deal, you know, when it's, when it's one at the end. And I'm going to save that. 
And so basically, that is my deal creation workflow. So now that anytime someone's HubSpot score, which again, is an automated process within HubSpot that is incrementing or decrementing someone's internal score based on specific activity that we set, um, once it's greater than or equal to 60, I'm going to create a deal and I'm going to put it in the 2017, 2018 sales pipeline at the discovery stage. And I'm automatically going to name it, you know, for example, Patrick Ang donor. Um, and so that's going to be my deal. So let's say, you know, that deal was created. I'd be able to go to sales in the master navigation deals. And, you know, again, because I'm in the 2017, 2018 sales pipeline, I would be in this discovery stage column over here as Patrick Ang donor. Um, so again, you can name these whatever you need to if you just go back to that workflow. And you would just, you know, you could even put the amount. But right now we're just going to put first name, last name, you know, donor um, in that as the, the deal creation kind of process. Just make sure you save that and you want to turn it on at the end. One thing to note is if you don't want duplicate deals, you can use um, unenrollment and suppression lists. So for example, you know that you don't want a specific grouping of people, whether it's just an active list or a static list, to be enrolled in this workflow to, to create a deal. Or you could also enable some sort of additional enrollment criteria where you say contact property associated deals is equal to zero. And this is a default HubSpot property that essentially any time that a deal is associated with a contact, that uh, property is incremented by one. So if someone has an associated deals property value of zero, that means they don't have a deal associated with that contact. Um, this kind of goes into a bigger conversation of deals in HubSpot, while they're associated with contacts in HubSpot, are not the same thing. These are completely separate and unique entities. And while they are linked in a way, what happens in a deal is not necessarily what happens to the contact. So, you know, for example, when you're looking through a contact's timeline and you see all the emails they opened, all the pages they viewed, all the CTAs they clicked, you're not going to see that information in the deal itself because it's a new unique entity. You'll know that that deal is connected with that contact, but they're not going to share that kind of intimate information between each other. And that is how you create a deal creation workflow in HubSpot.